Hello, hello, hello. Amphrodite here, your pop culture psychic, back to you again with another pick a card reading. This time, it's for your future spouse. Well, future potential spouse, because it's still your choice whether or not you want to get married. Um, but I'm super excited to give you this love reading. Um, so let's go ahead and show you the piles right away. So I'm going to quiet your mind, relax, and pick one of these three piles. The first one is the eggplant. The second one is the tomato, tomato, and the third one is your classic heart. So remember, if you guys like these, you can always tip. There's a link to my PayPal down below, and there's a button on YouTube that's a heart. This is thanks where you can get money directly. Um, remember, these readings are all legend for chambers only, and follow me on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Verdetti, same name everywhere. I do go live on all those platforms, and I do do readings for viewers on all of those. So remember, have fun. These readings are all legend for entertainment purposes only. Don't forget that. <clears throat> okay, hi, pile number one. This is for your future spouse. So remember, if you guys like these, you can tip. There's a link to my PayPal down below, and there's a button on YouTube that's a heart that says thanks to you, your money directly. So first and foremost, we do have the eggplant. Now, you all, I know you guys know the eggplant is a phallic symbol. Um, so right off the bat, I do think that there is really strong sexual chemistry. I wouldn't be shocked if sexual chemistry is kind of what brings the two of you together. Could be a sneaky link that turns into something more, or maybe it's just the best you've ever had, or it's just really intense. Or if it's, if you're interested in men, maybe he has a very unique, you know what, or a large one. I don't know. Um, and if it's a girl, maybe she has very large parts herself. I don't know. All I can tell you is I do think your you and your partner are definitely going to have a explosive, very intense um, sexual desire for each other. So it's one that will never die. Um, so there's that. Okay. Ooh. Virgo energy. So maybe you or they are a Virgo. Pluto, it's transformation, ninth house. Okay, so travel. So I do think that for some of you, this person could just come from a different cultural background. Uh, perhaps you meet them traveling. Perhaps they travel a lot. Perhaps they're a different race or something like that. Um, but a lot of times the ninth house is just different. This person had a completely different upbringing. It's Sagittarian energy. So they had a completely different upbringing to you. They are very different. This is not someone who dates someone who looks like them. You're not the siblings or dating type of person. This person definitely doesn't look like you. Um, and they're very, very different. The Virgo card makes me feel like there's a little bit of controlling energy here. A very dominance is very popular here. It's very prominent. Um, and Pluto is transformation too. So I do think that this person is going to teach you things that you've never experienced. Like this is someone that would enlighten you to a unique experience, sometimes sexually, sometimes just romantically, whatever. This is just someone that's bringing you into something you never experienced before. They also have a, a very unique lifestyle that they're interested in bringing you into. They have their own world. So for instance, it could be someone who works in finance and they, uh, you get brought into the finance world and all that, or it could be someone who comes from a very wealthy background and you get pulled into the wealthy background lifestyle. It could be someone who is a musician and you get pulled into the music industry or an influencer. You get pulled into the influencer industry. All I can say is that this person is going to bring you into their world, whatever their world is. Um, that's why the Virgo card makes me feel a little controlling energy. Now, for some of you, maybe you're the one that's bringing someone into your world, but I highly doubt that's most of you just for the simple fact of Pluto is transformation, which means that your life is going to be transformed. So this person usually has to be in the position of power in order for that to happen. Um, I also think that this is someone that has a shady past. This is someone that maybe you have a shady past with, but honestly, it's probably not you. Just for the simple fact of I think this person doesn't forgive themselves for their own mistakes and other people don't forgive them for their mistakes. So I feel like this is someone that's done something to someone else. So it could be someone who's cheated before or someone who had problems before or addiction or just something. They have a bad boy, bad girl reputation. And so their reputation definitely is not the best, but things are different with you. Yes, Lilith. Yes, that's, yes. Um, Equality, interesting. Ooh, they're really hot. 
Hermes communication. So this is the card that it, this is my favorite card from the gods deck. Um, he's the hottest in the deck. So this and Lilith is also very seductive and attractive. So for me, this person is incredibly attractive. Like you definitely are going to feel intimidated by this person. You're going to think that they're out of your league. You might be insecure in the beginning just for the simple fact of this person is like built like a brick house. They might have tattoos, but um, yeah, if it's a woman, it's like a classic feminine beauty. If it's a man, it's a classic masculine beauty. Like this person is very much the standard of beauty. Um, I also think Lilith, again, makes me think of astrology. For my people who are not straight, um, this person may be newly out or newly touching the waters of gay experience. Um, for my people who are straight, I wouldn't be surprised if this person is maybe bisexual or flirts with the idea of fluidity, just because these two are some of the most fluid energies. Um, and this person is not, uh, they're not a straight and narrow. Uh, they're not someone that's like afraid and they might actually be a hundred percent straight, but they'll be like, yeah, I dabbled once and I'm, I'm okay to admit that they're very secure in their sexuality, very secure in their femininity, very secure in their masculinity. They know what they like and what they don't like. And it's because they've tried every single flavor. This is someone that's tried everything on for size. They've been there, done that. Um, I think between the two of you, um, it's a very intense connection. Um, it's very Scorpio energy as well is what I'm feeling. Like this is very like, this is going to move quickly. This is going to move very quickly. Like you guys are absolutely going to move at the speed of light. Little worried about it. You might have to force yourself to slow down, but you guys are like intoxicated with each other. Magic. Yeah, fuck. You guys are really intense. It's like you meet at, at, at I think you might meet at night because Cinderella with the slipper, maybe at a party, an event or a club, maybe somewhere dark or something like that. But it definitely feels like could even be around Halloween because there's a pumpkin but or October. But it just feels very much like you guys are just going to click instantly. I think you're going to drop other people for each other. Yes, Midnight Prince. There's something to do with Midnight. Maybe you're both Taylor Swift fans. But there's something to do with Midnight. This is also one of the only... Um, male cards in the deck uh for the fairy deck and it always represents someone very attractive even if it's a female they're very attractive this person is incredibly attractive um ask for what you want be honest yeah this person i think you're gonna meet them you're gonna meet them i don't know maybe in a dark place or at nighttime but it i don't think either of you are gonna look for each other i think that the two of you are just gonna accidentally bump into each other be introduced to each other there's just something where it's like like almost like, this is what I'm seeing in my head. It's like you're taking care of your friend who's drunk at a party and um, you're kind of like laughing at each other because of it. Like he's like there laughing at you or she's like there laughing at you. Like, oh my God. Like there's some weird, you have a common ground that's like awkward. There's an awkward situation that happens where the two of you are able to connect. Whether it be laughing at someone, making fun of someone, something awkward happening. It's like being at a wedding and someone does something crazy and they're seated next to you and you're like, that's crazy. And you guys hit it off. Like it's some weird thing or like a fist fight. And you guys are like, what the hell? Here we go. Lord God masculine. I told you, I fucking told you hearth and homecoming. This person is very, 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 very traditionally attractive. I also think that this person might have had Again, we're seeing Lord God and the Virgo card. I think this person does have control issues. You're going to have to work through that. This person doesn't like giving up control. This person likes to be in control. They are bossy. They are in control. They're also, I, they're, they're in charge of something. I told you, when they bring you into their lifestyle, they're in charge of something. They run something, maybe run a company, but they do something. They're in charge. They're the boss. If they're not the boss in their professional life, then they have to be the boss in their personal life just because they're in charge in some capacity. I don't care if it's a woman or a man. This masculine Lord God energy tells me that they rule the roost. Malice. And again, this person has been petty in the past and they have caused problems before. They have a shady past. They do. The temple of my body. So this is a message for some of you. 
not all of you. But for some of you, someone here might be a sex worker or something like that. Again, we're dealing with a lot of themes of sex. Um, that's obviously not going to be for a, a lot of you, but definitely for some of you, it's going to translate literally there. For others, the temple of my body makes me feel like this person has a hang up with the fact that they're so attractive and they feel like people use them for what they can offer, whether it be physically, sexually, or financially. This person feels like other people use them for their benefit. The spotlight. See? it's it, To me, it makes me feel like this person is just used to being used and has a hang up about being used. And they feel like people always want something from them. Always. And it's never for them as a person. They have a hang up about it. A part of me wants to get the violin, the world's smallest violin, and be like, oh, pretty people are complaining. But there is some truth to what they're saying. I do think they've been taken advantage of a lot. Okay, three of pentacles reversed, eight of swords reversed, page of cups. I think that they avoided their emotions when they were younger. I think they avoided their emotions. I think that they were going down a path in life they didn't like. I think this person has had a change of career recently, or maybe not recently, but like they started off doing one thing one way and realized that wasn't the life they wanted because I think that they stumbled into their career. I keep hearing stumbled into their career. Four of Wands, the Lovers reversed, the Four reversed. They might have just moved or are moving. I feel move. There's a move or purchasing a new piece, a new house, purchasing a new thing or getting a new something. They're, they, they, there's something to do with that. Um, fool reverse and lover. This person's dead serious though. This person is very serious in love. When you meet this person, their light is on. So I've been talking about this a lot recently and I'm sure you've seen it on TikTok if you watch stuff up about this. But there's this saying that like, a lot of times they say it for men, but I honestly think it's somewhat true for women too, where like when men are ready to get in a relationship, their light turns on and it's whoever's in proximity. And I feel like it's similar with the energy I'm seeing where this person is more than ready to get into something serious. And I don't care if it's a man or a woman, this person is very much ready to get into something serious. They want a serious relationship. They are looking for someone who is going to go all the way. They are interested in monogamy only. Um, you might have to fight them a little bit on some of the things they want you to do, but that's okay. And there is an ex, there is a prominent ex in their life that is going to be very angry because they're going to be pissed off that you got the life that they've always wanted. And you are probably going to deal with that ex for a long time because they're bitter. Um, they have a bitter ex. To be fair, I would be bitter too if I was this ex because your future spouse here was a dick to them. So I kind of understand why they feel the way they feel. Um, yeah, let's get you, um, okay, I want to see if I can, I'm going to pull numbers and letters, and then I want to see if I can maybe figure out what they look like, because sometimes I see stuff, I don't know, I just, like I said before, I think they're traditionally beautiful, traditionally attractive, kind of got that in the beginning, I don't know if there's anything else, I feel like they're just traditionally attractive. Like cookie cutter attractive. Like movie star attractive, I guess I would say. Not that they're going to be a movie star, but you know what I mean? Like the standard of beauty. Okay, we have three and 31. I'll pull one more, one more number. These could be ages, 26, months. It could be birthdays. It could be anything. And then... These could be initials, and this could be any letter S. C O S F D. Uh, 
N W S. I feel like I feel like initial. I'm hearing initials, so I think what we're looking for with these are going to be initials. Okay, that's it. Okay, we have E R T and A. Okay. And then let's get you a song. Ooh, it's Kesha's hymn. So what an interesting song. Um, this song is about being rebellious. It's This is a hymn for the hymnless, kids with no religion. We keep on sinning, we keep on singing. Um, I know I'm not perfect. I know, although I fucked up. It's basically about someone that's very aware. This person is aware that they've screwed up a lot in life. They fucked up a lot in life, and I think they've realized that they're the reason all of their relationships have fallen apart. And they're finally ready to do the work and change that. This person is really ready to change, and I think that's when you're going to meet them. You're going to meet them when they're finally like, okay, like this is it. Like I'm, I'm ready for... I. I really think you're going to have a hard time believing them at first just because you're going to be like, why is this person so attractive? Like they absolutely are not that not serious, but they are. <sighs> this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Again, what I'm seeing in my mind's eye is someone who is the standard of beauty. Period. Traditional beauty. That's all I'm getting. If you like that tip, there's a link to my paper down below. It's a button on YouTube. That's a heart. It says thanks to you. Can directly follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Reddit. Until next time, good luck, pile number one. Okay, pile number two. This is for your future spouse. Remember, if you like these, you can tip. There's a link to my PayPal down below. There's a button that says heart. It says thanks to you money directly. Okay, so pile two. We do have the tomato, the tomato. So for me, again, when I see tomatoes, I think tomato, 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 boo. So I am seeing total friction at the start of this connection. It's giving me brat, brat, tamer. It's giving me a little bit of feistiness, a little bit of fieriness, competitiveness. There's definitely some sort of like love mixed with hate. So let's see where that plays out. Gemini, okay. So definitely high levels of communication. The two of you have the same sense of humor. You guys laugh at the same stuff. You guys joke a lot. I think both of you have a hard time taking certain things serious. Neptune, okay, Neptune is illusion and disillusionment, so Pisces energy. And then the fourth house, which is also Cancer energy, but that's home and family. This person is a very, very, very good cuddler. Like, best cuddling you've ever had in your life. I don't care if it's a man or a woman. Best cuddling you've ever had in your life. Um, I think if you guys are interested in a family, um, this person would be willing to do that definitely willing to uh, think about the traditional roles with the four, fourth house. Um, they might own a home as well with the fourth house, um, but Neptune uh, is illusionment. And it's, I think music, you might bond over music, music, maybe they make music, singing, something like that. Music is very important with Neptune and Gemini. Um, this person makes you feel safe. They're very protective, protective, possessive, and like to take ownership. Um, so they're very, very, very much that. If it is, it could even be clingy. This person might be clingy. Um, not in a bad way, though. Remember, this is your future spouse. So it's not like, oh, you're clingy and annoying. It's just that this person likes to be around you. They like to spend time with you. Um, and you, you guys have a lot of fun. Like to me, this... When I see this couple, this is the couple that is really fun to be around. Really funny, um, 
Yes, they're always together, but they have really a good time. They don't take anything serious. They're intelligent. They're funny. They're witty. I think the two of you are interesting at parties. It reminds me of the creative couple that's really fun at parties. Um, you might throw parties. You might host events together. Because just to me, I'm seeing this as like, like in my head, I see like um, really funny creative girl and really funny heartthrob. Like, or, you know, it doesn't matter what gender anyone is, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. It's like, it's like, a, it's like, it's really authenticity, sacrifice. Yeah, the two of you are, are, you know, the two of you are just yourselves. And I think you guys are weird. Like you're not, this is not, you guys wear your heart on your sleeves. Like this is the couple that doesn't mind fighting or like playfully fighting. This is the couple that doesn't ma mind. Like they're very transparent. Like the two of you are very honest. Honestly, you guys are both open books. You guys are honestly almost too open to the point where you might share things that other people would, would be like, you shouldn't share that. Nothing is really sacred between this couple. Like you guys are kind of just like, let it all hang out. We don't care. Um, you're both attention whores though. I'm not going to lie. Um, if you yourself are a wallflower, this person is going to bring out the attention whore in you because the two of you are absolutely going to love to overshare. <laughs> and if that's the type of, if that means that you're the type of person that gets a man and you're a my man type of bitch where it's like, well, my man this, my man that, just to brag that you have a man, or if you're a guy and you like to show off your girl, or if you're gay and the two of you like to do everything together, I don't know. All I know is you guys are definitely going to like the attention from your coupling. If you don't like the attention, other people are going to be paying attention to you and bitching about you. Like your relationship, people are going to talk about. They're going to bitch about it. They're going to talk about it. So if you don't like attention, good luck because I think you and your spouse are going to garner attention no matter what you do. Just because I think other people are just going to be like, you guys are so interesting and so quirky and so different. Goldilocks, entitlement. Oh... Shimmer, glamour, confidence, allure, charisma. One of you is like so fucking charming. I think it's your person. I think they're charming as fuck. I there. I think your person is very fucking charming. Like super charismatic, super charming, could talk the pants off of anyone. Like, absolutely. Like, I can just see you being annoyed. Like, bitch, you talk to everyone. Everyone loves you. Like, it reminds me of, like, it reminds me of, like, when you're hosting an event, you're hosting a party, and this person's the life of the party. Like, they're like a Leo shining bright. Like, this person is, they talk a lot, and I think every, they know a lot of people. They have a very, very large amount of friends or friend group. Um, I just see them knowing a lot of people. If they don't, then you must. You must be super charismatic, super charming, and have a lot of friends. Because one person in this in this group is really, really shines bright. I do think that it's going to be a point of contention between the two of you, just because it seems like there might be a little bit of competitiveness and jealous jealousy. It's not toxic. And that's where the tomato comes in. It's playful jealousy. I think the two of you like to make each other jealous. I think the two of you like to play with each other. The two of you have a little bit of a game going on where it's kind of like hot for the two of you to kind of get jealous of each other. Okay, we have prosperity, Yule rebirth. I think when the two of you come together, one of you is going to hit the lottery, so to speak. So I think one of you, your career is going to take off, or maybe you move into a new area and you become the new king and queen or whatever. Like there's just some sort of like growth Potential that happens when the two of you are together. You might even end up working together or helping someone at work or meeting this person through work because I just see a lot of money between the two of you, a lot of wealth, a lot of happiness. I think the two of you are going to help each other. I think you you make up for what the other person lacks. It's like if one person is good at numbers and the other person's bad at numbers and you fulfill that need, it's like, yeah, knowledge. I think the two of you can really teach each other things. Anger and chains. Things that would make other people angry make you laugh. You find each other endearing. So if other people were to learn about quirks in your relationship, they'd be like, that would drive me insane, but it doesn't care about you. You don't care about that. You're like, I don't care. That's funny to me. 
Like, oh, my husband always forgets to wear his underwear. I think that's really funny. Or, oh, my wife always forgets to pick up the trash. Like, there's just something there that's like you think is so funny. And everyone everyone else will be like, that's fucking annoying, but you think it's cute. The bubblegum Brit. Mm. So the reason why I don't like that is there's only one one critique I have here with the anger and change in the bubblegum Brit. One of you loves to trigger the other person. Like and play innocent. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy their sense of humor, but one of you is a fucking troll. One of you is a big fucking troll and likes to fully commit to the troll and fully commit to triggering people and trolling and think it's really funny. Like to the point of like, if you're mad about it, it's even funnier. Like this person really loves, like they could be a comedian because they just think it's funny. Like they'll be doing bits. I see bits. That's the word I'm looking for. It's bits. I see bits and trolling consistently. Okay, seven of cups, two of swords, Knight of Cups. They have a fantastic smile. Great teeth and a fantastic smile. Great teeth, fantastic smile. I think you're going to be hesitant with them at first. You're like, yeah, they're cute, but but they're charming and they win you over. The Fantastic teeth, great smile, a very contagious laugh. They have no fear and they're not embarrassed quickly. They're fearless. Death reverse, tower reverse, and six of cups. They turn all negatives into a positive. They're extremely optimistic, and they do not. This person does not mope. They do not wallow. They do not fall into self-pity. They are not someone who cries very often. Like This person tries to see the best in everything. Extremely optimistic, almost hippie-like there. This person has dealt with a ton of negative dark shit in their childhood. Um, maybe a death in the family maybe um, tumultuous energy, um, maybe they're an orphan. I don't know what it is, but um, there's definitely a lot of trauma when they were a child, Six of Cups, Tower, Death. When they were a child, there's a lot of trauma. That's why it's like giving me like comedian teas because it's like this person has gone through a ton of trauma and that's why they don't take anything that serious and they're able to look on the optimistic side of life. But they have a great smile, a great laugh. In terms of their appearance otherwise, I just, I don't, I just keep seeing, I just, all I keep seeing is like laughing. If it's a girl, it's hard to tell because it doesn't always translate directly. But if it's a girl, I do see brunette hair, but that doesn't, that's not necessarily meaning anything. And if it's a guy, I definitely see him with like rosy cheeks. But I think that might be, a metaphor for something else. Anyways, that's the best I can do there. Let me get you some. This guy has nice arms. The guy has nice arms and the girl has nice legs. Let me do this first. Oh, one. 26, 11, 22. It could be numbers, ages, birthdays. I don't think they have good style. D, E, E, Y. I don't think they have good style. Y, G. That's one thing I will say. I think they have bad style, so that might be something you have to work on with them. R A M E S. Because I'm hearing diamond in the rough, which makes me think they're not. Their style is not that great. T D A could be in letters, names. I think for most of these, it's going to be initials, though. R and T. Let's get one more. No, we already have an A. Let's get a different letter here. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Come on, Owen. Let's get you a song. Not me getting a hinge match as soon as I open up my phone. 
It's a sign. <gasps> it's Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> this person is going to shake up your entire life. Like they're going to come in and kind of like make fun of you, tease you, be really funny. You're going to kind of hate them at first. You're like, oh, you're so fucking annoying. But then you're going to end up falling in love with them. So I'm kind of here for it. Um, I think you're going to meet this person after a major heartbreak. Wrecking ball. You're going to meet some meet this person right after a major heartbreak. Or they might be there for you while you're going through a major heartbreak or about to go through one. If you like that tip, there's a link to my PayPal down below. It's button on YouTube. It says thanks to you money directly. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Brunetti. I'm live on all those platforms. And please subscribe down below. Good luck. I put you high up in the sky. And now there's no coming down. You slowly burn you and let your ashes on the ground. Don't you ever say. Okay, pile number three. This is for your future spouse. If you picked the heart, remember if you like these, you can always tip. There's a link to my paper down below. It's about it's heart. It says thanks to you, money directly. So I am seeing this as a little bit of a classic romance. Um, this person might wear their heart on the sleeve, um, but I am seeing this person as extremely romantic. Like romance is very important. I see a lot of romantic gestures. So. Let's keep it going. Ooh, Sagittarius. Okay, very straightforward energy here. Could be a sign of travel. Uranus, unpredictability, the 10th house. This person might travel for work. Um, Capricorn energy there too, the Aquarius energy. Um, this person might travel for work. Um, they might be on the go a lot. Um, I do think that this person puts their career before a lot of other things. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, they might have a public facing career or just be responsible for a lot of things. Um, Uranus makes me think that this person um, has gone through a lot of change appearance wise. Maybe they've gone through phases. Maybe they change their appearance a lot. Um, maybe they are an ugly duckling or had a glow up. Um, Cause there's definitely been a lot of transformation. I do think this person is very, very unpredictable like they are spontaneous unpredictable um i think that they are kind of unique they're an enigma you're not really going to be able to figure them out um but that's okay um i think with the sagittarian energy they could be a sag but i just feel like this person is very um blunt uh and straightforward so for me they're a lot of fun they're kind of chaotic, um, but they're not flaky. They're, they do commit. This person is a committer. I just think that they're very busy and they have a lot of things going on and they're very spontaneous. So for them, they're more about the experience, especially in the beginning. You are definitely going to be a little bit weary of this person in the beginning because they're going to be very romantic and then they're going to be busy and then they're going to be romantic and then they're going to be busy. But they will be in communication with you. It's just... They have to schedule you that you into their life. Come on, Rihanna. Maybe I'll both like Rihanna. Self-trust, Hades, death. You need to not let your insecurities get the best of you with this person. Um, because I do think that sometimes you might feel like, I think in the beginning of this connection, you might feel like, is this too good to be true? Is this real? Are they actually, do they care? Is he busy or is she busy? Um, or are they lying? No, I think they're honest, and I think um, they're. Oh, I think they're just rebellious in general. A very rebellious spirit. Um, the death here, the the Hades card. You're not gonna live a traditional lifestyle with this person. It's not happening. They don't live a traditional lifestyle. They do not want traditional. Um, if you want traditional. I think this person is going to make you second guess yourself just because they 
want to live a non-traditional lifestyle. That does not mean non-monogamy. What that means is they're not looking for the white picket fence. Like, let me marry you, have a bunch of children, have a bunch of babies, and just chill and have a good time. No. They're looking for fun, excitement, adventure, traveling, experience. They don't want to just settle down and have babies. Like, that is not their goal. I do think this person, this person is either young or young at heart. They could be an older person who's just very young at heart, but this person has a very young, youthful spirit. They have a shit ton of vitality, a shit ton of energy. Again, they might travel for work. Very common. <laughs> um, but they're, I just see them as like on the go. The red shoes obsession. For some of you, this might be a model, especially if you're into women, this might be a model. Um, for others, uh, to me, it makes me feel like this person always looks good and always smells good, always, Taurus energy. They always look good and they always smell good. Smell good all the time. Um, very, very, okay, uh, there it is, okay. Crystal magic, creation of dawn, okay. So there's the insecurity that I was picking up on in the self-trust. Everybody wants this person, everybody. There is not a single person that doesn't wanna date this person. Everyone wants to date this person. They are a high value person and everybody wants them. Literally everyone wants them. People are going to be very jealous of you. Very fucking jealous of you. And I do think people will try to cause problems. You're going to be used to it. Just letting you know now. Because the beginning, Crystal Dawn Magic, makes me feel like this is the beginning of a really powerful connection. And the death card and obsession makes me feel like other people are going to be like, why couldn't that be me? Why couldn't that be me? That should have been me. Um, this person... Does not, I repeat, does not entertain other people. Everybody wants them. They don't want other people. The Sagittarius card makes me think they're kind of weird and goofy and quirky in certain ways and a bit socially unaware. This is someone who's unaware. They're still romantic and they're still going to do romantic things to you when with you, but they are very unaware of people's intentions and very naive to the fact that everybody wants them. So I think that this person has a habit of being nice to a fault and just not really being being aware of it. So I do think you're probably going to take on a more protective role of this person, almost wanting to protect their innocence. They may have grown up in a bubble, um, but you do want to protect their innocence. Homeland Foundation. Earth grounding. Yes, you are a grounding force for this person. You are a semblance of home and security to this person. This person comes to you. It's like someone who's someone who always comes back to you, always comes back to you. You might even start as friends first and then realize there's a lot more chemistry here than you than you initially thought because this person just picks up the phone and calls you out of the blue all the time. Literally, FaceTimes you randomly. Like, hey, uh, I want to talk to you for a second. Like, this person, super spontaneous, sends you flowers randomly. Like, this person is a very, very good listener. Very good listener. They have the memory of an elephant they do not forget. Glamour. I'm telling you, people want, people want black flower fragrance. People think that you're not attractive enough for this person. And you don't have enough to offer for this person. So I do think that there is um, a discrepancy between the two of you. So that means that um, this person might be further along in their um, in life, um, maybe age-wise. Um, they could also just be further along in their career. Um, or they could have had a head start. This could be someone who's a Nepo baby or someone who, you know, stumbled into things or just was very lucky or used their looks to get ahead a little bit quicker. So I do think this person has a bit of a head start. And so with the Black Flower Fragrance and Glamour card, a lot of people are like, who's this bitch? Who are you? Why are you? What are you doing here? Get out of here. Like there's this person's a little bit ahead. I don't think that they're, I think that they outpaced everyone. I don't think it's just you. I don't think you're behind. I think you're on time. And I think they had a leg in and they outpaced you because of that. They outpaced everyone. The perfume queen, that's curious. I told you they fucking smell good. What did I tell you? They smell really fucking good. They're, they have a specific cologne or perfume that they smell really fucking good. 
Page of Wands reversed, Hermit reversed, Queen of Pentacles. Excuse me. Hmm. <laughs> this is the type of person like, you should quit your job and travel the world with me. And you're the person that's like, let's come back down to earth. This person has many ideas and they're spontaneous. Like, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's do that. And you're the person that brings them back down to earth and is like, let's do this instead. You're the practical to their storm. World, queen of wands, two of wands reversed. <laughs> Should I say this? I think, so I feel like you're going to feel pressure when you're with them to look your best all the time. So I do think you're going to go through a major glow up when you're with them. Major glow up. Like I see you getting hot as fuck. You're like, all right, bitch. Like, I got to step my pussy up. Like that's what I'm that's what I'm feeling with the world, the queen of wands and the two of wands. It's like, oh yeah, everybody wants wants my man. Oh yeah, everybody wants my girl. Well, guess what? We're about to be the hottest fucking couple ever. You guys are very fucking competitive. I see you as competitive. I see you very competitive and I I do think you're going to have a healthy competition with another couple too. I see you kind of beefing a little bit with another couple. I kind of live for it. I do think, I do think, especially because I think this person is willing to do things with you. Like if you're not into fitness, this person's going to get you into fitness so you can do fitness together. Or I think they're going to bring you into some sort of something that makes you feel better. Like if maybe they're really into fashion, they up your fashion game. Maybe they're the ones that are good in fashion, they up your fashion game. Or maybe um, they're really into fitness, they get you into fitness. Um, or maybe they're really into a certain lifestyle, they bring you into that lifestyle. Like there's something that you're just like, you know what, bitch? All right. All right. You think I'm not good enough, bitch? Let me show you what the fuck I can do. Let me show you how Stella got her motherfucking groove back, bitch. Like, that's the vibe that I'm feeling with this, and I'm so here for it. It's not bad. It's not toxic. It's not like, I don't feel good enough for this person, so I need to be better. No, that's not what this is. This is, bitch, I need to step my game up because I need to show the girls that I have what it takes. I need to show the boys that I have what it takes. That's what this is. This person reminds you that you are the shit. This person reminds you that you are attractive this person gives you the confidence that you needed this person makes you feel loved you needed to feel loved in order to feel comfortable being who you are you look better and feel better because this person gives you the love you've always wanted period very confident in this connection by the way out of all three this relationship makes me feel like it has the strongest to last so we have five and one this could be a nine or a six and then 26 could be ages days numbers fucking months who knows I'm trying to think appearance wise what do i see not f you and fun. They're really fun. Oh, not funny. This could be any letter, so it's literally like a Y. Funny. I think they're, they're a shit ton of fun. Everyone wants them, though. Why does everyone want them? G-I-R. Jet. Not them owning a private jet. T-O-E-I. Tofu. Can we get a different letter? That's E again. And another N, T. I want a different letter. P, okay. I'm trying to think of, get you a song. I'm trying to think of what they look like. This is so weird, because we got the word girl, and then we got Run the World Girls from Beyonce. If they're a guy, I think they have a lot of girls around them. If they're a girl, they have a shit ton of girlfriends. Um, this person, hmm, I do think, hmm, I think they submit to you. 
like this person is not known for submitting to people, but they submit to you. Like this is someone who is not you, not other people would be shocked that they will, they're willing to give up control to you. Other people would be shocked that they're willing to do things for you. Like you're different. And I think that's why people get angry because they're like, what the fuck? Why is he or she the one that gets all of this? Why do they get to be with with you? I've always wanted to be with you. It's because this person was looking for a dominant energy and everyone else was more submissive. And you're bringing about a bit of a dominant energy that they like. Um, in terms of appearance, I don't think... They look like they don't try, but they do. Like... Outfit wise, appearance wise, it's like no effort look, but they did put a ton of effort in. Um, I think they have messy hair a lot. Um, to me, I see them as like, I think, what was the, is what was the Sagittarius? I feel like they don't, they don't, okay. When they're in a crowd, a lot of times you wouldn't look at them twice. Like, it's not that they don't stand out and it's not that they blend in, but it's that that's what it is. They don't like to create noise. They're low key. They want to be more low key. So they try to keep themselves low key. They try to keep their energy low key. They try to keep their vibes low key. They're trying their best. They're super spontaneous though, but they try to keep themselves low key. So they're oftentimes looked past because I feel like they're very low key. That's just what I'm getting. Casual. Low key, no effort, appearance wise. Effort, no effort, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Very flowy. Like, I think they wear like flowy clothes or like baggy clothes or something. Um, not very uptight type of vibe. Okay, that's what I see. Hope you guys like that. If you did, make sure you, you tip. There's links to my PayPal below. It's one of these artists. It's thanks to you, money directly. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Variety. I do lives and do readings for people on there all the time. Follow me or subscribe down below. Until next time.